Hi, you're listening to Mindful Mutterings Goes Travelling, the mindfulness-based travel podcast for all of us adventurers who love to go travelling, love to live in the present moment and want to make life a more enriching experience. Thanks for listening. Hi, thank you for joining me on my adventures in Bali. So after an excellent 18 and a half hour Malaysian Airlines flight um, and a quick stop off in Kuala Lumpur, I arrived at Bali Airport and uh, my first impressions did not disappoint. The airport looks exactly like you would imagine a Balinese building to look like and inside there are the most amazing wooden and metal sculptures. So I'm already in my happy place. Uh, Luckily I'd got my visa before I left because even without having to queue for that the lines for passport control were long. So inching ourselves slowly forward took an hour but after finally being fingerprinted, something that I'm not really keen on but that's becoming more common in other countries and obviously if you don't comply you don't get in. Anyhow, uh, made my way through to pick up my luggage flash my QR code at customs, which is not an euphemism. Uh, You have to complete an online customs form before you arrive to get a QR code to allow you to go through customs. And with all the official stuff finally done, I made my way out of the airport to find my driver. Although I I did have to stop several times to take the photos of the beautiful carvings and uh, architecture. So the lovely Patu was waiting for me and whisked me off to the Bliss Sanctuary in Seminyak. Took us about I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to get there. but And I already knew I was going to love Bali. Uh, the buildings everywhere were so beautiful to look at. There are statues literally everywhere. Shrines. Oh, it's beautiful and green. And the people look interesting and stunning in their costumes and their dress. Oh, it's just, I was just really in my happy place. So then we reached the retreat. And again, my mind was blown. So you have an expectation, don't you? It's in the pictures. But yeah, palm trees, blue pool, hammock, meditation pods, day beds, beautiful buildings, uh, lovely garden area and shala with beautiful Buddhas, our fresco dining area. Um, but yeah, the key for me had to be the crowning glory was the most beautiful, humongous golden Buddha head at the top of the grass area absolutely amazing and he and I had a few conversations so um yeah it was just it was just all so lovely the welcome was lovely a hug from the hostesses and the staff at the villa introduced to everyone and then Eka then ran through uh what I wanted from my break what I was there to discover about myself and about Bali uh was I was told absolutely nothing was too much trouble gluten-free food not an issue at all and whatever I wanted during the day would be cooked fresh for me at whatever time I wanted it it was literally just pampered beyond belief so a fruit smoothie appeared and I was shown to my room which just continued to blow me away not only is the room beautiful uh, with hand carved wooden doors on the wardrobes and a beautiful door that uh, takes you into your actual room uh, but there was a fantastic outdoor ensuite bath and shower room with plants everywhere and oh rainfall shower just beautiful but to top it all off my room had a long window and on the other side of it was a beautiful buddha statue so i really i couldn't have been in a better room for me it was just amazing there's a welcoming letter there was a sea made from beautiful flowers on the bed there's candles and incense to help um, us relax and feel at home honestly absolutely amazing so after i'd obviously taken a quick video because <laughs> i had to show everybody how amazing it was um, i had half an hour to unpack and settle in before my first treatment which was my first um experience of a Balinese massage um, which is done outside my room uh, with a beautiful garden as a view oh yeah just perfect just perfect Um, and it's just it was just amazing like all the knots were gone it was a fantastic massage Um, and then I had a facial on the day bed by the pool so already I'm feeling pretty chilled and after the last 24 hours my body really needed this and was absolutely singing with happiness by the time she'd finished. Uh, I had a quick shower before having a yin yoga class 
and the lovely uni was a very gentle teacher um, with very clear inst instructions and gentle subtle posture changes and I'd only, I'd only been in Bali for probably four or five hours but already I was feeling connected totally relaxed um, and was excited to get changed for dinner and meet my fellow retreaters because the only time that you actually are asked to all come together it's entirely up to you how you run your retreat it's your retreat that they absolutely bend over backwards to make sure you have what you want but you are all asked to join um, everyone for dinner at 7 30 every evening and that's actually really nice because it, for those who are traveling on their own well most of us were traveling on our own but for those who like to spend time on their own it's a good check-in point and also it's really nice to hear what other people are doing what their journey is how they've spent their day what they've noticed so it's a really really lovely um, thing to do so we sat around this gorgeous wooden table outside with the, gold, the golden buddha behind us and were served the most delicious indian dinner uh, indonesian dinner with a fabulous mix of meat and vegetable dishes all gluten-free all totally delicious and the conversation was easy as we'd all had lovely treatments during the day and were desperate for an early night after our flights. And although we hadn't all arrived on the same day, we were all within kind of 24 hours of each other. And obviously people on the longer flights were trying to catch up and people who had come long time distances were trying to find some kind of balance. So, yeah, before we settled down, we were given our schedules for the next day. And that's really it's a lovely little card. And on it, it just says, you know, when your yoga class is, when your treatments have been arranged for you, whether you're going out for the day, whatever it is that you've asked the hostess to arrange for you, she puts on this little card so you don't have to give it a second thought. You can just look at your card, know where you've got to be. Absolutely amazing. So I had that um, and then I was getting all excited because at 7.30 the next day I was off to Ubud for a day of sightseeing. So went off to my room only to find out that my bed had been turned down this beautiful mosquito net was drawn around the room's been sprayed with an environmentally friendly kind of bug repellent and oh it's, it was just the first the beautiful start to my first day in Bali and I very gratefully crawled into bed messaged the family to let them know that I was having a great time and was asleep within seconds so hope you'll join me to find out how I got on on my sightseeing tour of Ubud. Um, thanks for listening. Hi, so thanks for joining me for day two of my Bali adventure. So today I was up early and after a lovely breakfast of the most delicious fruit and yogurt, lots and lots of dragon fruit, which was just so yummy, uh, I was off with Putu to Ubud. And for those of you that don't know, this is where the film Eat, Pray, Love was filmed and where the character that Julia Roberts plays spends four months of her time. So started at the Paranatata Empul, which is a beautiful Hindi temple, and I might not have said that right, uh, with healing waters flowing through it. So on arrival, after you've paid to get in and everything, you're given a sarong to wear around your legs as a mark of respect and long hair needs to be tied back for the same reason. Then you're allowed to walk through absolutely beautiful grounds with shrines built in glorious hand-carved wood, ornately painted with offering tables. Uh, some have ponds in front of them with fish in. You pass a lotus pond and then there's the inner temple. Um, and you can't go in there unless you're Hindu and wearing the ceremonial white and gold outfit. But you're, you're allowed pretty much free reign around the rest of the temple. So then I went to the sacred baths. Um, and these are stone baths, I don't know, about four metres long, maybe. And in the first bath, there are, I think there's 13 water spouts, but we're only um, allowed to use 10 of them. So you stand in front of each one. Oh, you've got a sarong on, actually. You Sorry, so you, you have to go and get changed, and you get given a different sarong, which you put on so that you're covered in the water. Again, out of respect. So you, you get into the pool, and you get to the first water spout, and you stand in front of it. You say your prayer or you ask for whatever it is you want to receive or, you know, if you want healing, whatever it may be, you say what it is that you want to say. You then wash your face three times and then you put your head under the spout and you do that for every one of the ten sprigs or sprigots, whatever, spouts. Um, 
and it was just the most amazing thing. Now, I did notice that other people were washing their mouth out with the water and drinking it, but because we've been told that the water is so bad for us and obviously you'll get barley belly, uh, we'd been asked not to do that, or I'd been asked not to do that. So anyway, so you do that in front of each of the 10 spouts, uh, and then you go in the second bath, which is slightly smaller and less spouts. Um, and again, same thing, repeat your prayers, wash your face, dip your head under, or put your head under the spout. And then you go into the third bath, whereas there's only one that we're allowed to use. And you take more time there because you're repeating your prayer as you did for the previous spouts. But then you ask, you're asking for kind of a blessing and what you want from this experience and you're setting an intention. And then when you're ready, you wash your face and put your head under the spout and then you exit the pool. And uh, it was, I have to say, the most amazing, calming and serene experience. Maybe because of the setting, maybe because I was praying with so many other people and the energy was contagious, or maybe because this is the type of experience that I'd come for Bali for and was just completely ready for and in the moment with it. But whatever it was, it was such a beautiful experience. I'm really struggling to put into words how amazing it felt, but it was, it, yeah, it was just absolutely life-changing I guess it, it, the feeling of absolute connectedness and calm and peace and kind of at one with the divine was like nothing I've ever had before anyway I absolutely loved it so if you're ever in Bali I strongly strongly suggest that you have a go anyway so then I went um to just sit for a bit and take in some of the energy and uh, there was a little covered area, so I decided I was going to meditate in that for a little while, which again was really beautiful because you're kind of aware of of the noise around you, but it doesn't intrude. But also there's just such a beautiful feeling in that area and and everyone's very respectful of everyone else because obviously everyone's gone there for a religious purpose of some description. And yeah, it was the most incredible meditation um, on been really lucky that I've been able to meditate in some very holy special places but like I said I just felt such a sense of calm and connection and it was just a very beautiful experience and one that I will be forever grateful for. So after I'd had my feel there uh, Patu took me to the Seeking Rice Terrace uh, so-called because rice grows on terraces funnily enough um, due to the fact that the farm is high in the hills and they need to um, conserve the water for, for the rice to be able to grow. And it is just a glorious sight of emerald green as far as you can see. Um, and I also learned that up until now I've been completely mistaken about how rice had grown. I always thought that the green plants were the ones ready to be harvested, but actually they're the new plants and it's the yellow ones that are ready. Um, and apparently it only takes four months to grow a crop. So while I was there, there's lots of uh, different ways that you can see these terraces. I mean, obviously, you can just stand and look over and they're very beautiful. You can hike through them on a trail that's been cut out. There's a zip line for the really brave hearted. You can ride a bike on a zip line across the um, terraces. But I opted for the giant swing <laughs> and I am so, so glad I did. So it's this huge, huge swing with very long ropes um, and that you can swing across the terrace on. Um, and I have to say, I was a little bit relieved when they put a safety harness on because it really was an incredibly long drop. Um, and being short, obviously, I need a little bit of help jumping up. So they kind of grabbed hold of my harness and threw me in the swing as I jumped, um, struck me all in. And then once I got into the swing and was safe uh, and all secured, off I went. So they give you the biggest shove and after you swing out the first time and your gut literally drops to the floor, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And the view is incredible and it's like you're flying um, and they just keep pushing you. So you go higher and higher and you just get a chance to take in the enormity of the place. And it's just Oh, it's just amazing it's so so beautiful and so peaceful and so green and lush and you're literally flying through the air over the top of it absolutely amazing now when your swing runs out of power they take you out they turn you around throw you back in the swing if you're my height get you all strapped in 
and push you again so you're going backwards out over the terrace but you get to see everything that was previously behind you honestly absolutely loved it it was just brilliant absolutely brilliant so eventually we left there and then headed back in the direction towards Seminyak um, but we stopped first at the sacred monkey forest uh, and those of you that are regular uh, listeners to my podcast you'll know that I had an experience with a monkey in India um, so I was I was quite prepared for this um, experience. I kind of knew what was going to happen. I knew how tactile monkeys were. I knew they liked to steal food. uh, And I knew how quick they could be and how clever they are. So, sanctuary costs about five quid to get in. uh, And it's as much like the monkey's natural environment as they can create. And they are everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere you look. At your feet, on the bridges, in front of you, behind you, swinging through trees everywhere absolutely everywhere and there's huge notices everywhere telling you not to bring food in not to stare at the male monkeys or to approach the babies but as always some people think they know better so consequently their bags were opened or taken off their backs and the monkeys relieved them of the contents and this was funny for everyone else but very annoying for the people involved Uh, I saw one woman trying to coach a baby onto her shoulder which naturally incurred the wrath of the mother and then she got upset about that and then two men being silly in front of a male which resulted in a lot of noise from the monkey and then being chased and this is what annoys me because then the monkeys get blamed actually these people were being irresponsible and they need if you're going to interact with wildlife if you're going to have the privilege of being able to be that close to wildlife then you have to follow the rules so that you're safe and the animals are protected and if you can't do that if you're just not mature enough to be able to follow a simple set of instructions to keep everybody safe then don't go but anyway that aside it was a really lovely um experience uh and yeah the monkeys were only doing what is natural for them and that's what the signs warn you about so on your head be it but i had a lovely time and the monkeys were gorgeous and at the end of the day they are wild animals and we have to respect that you know it has to be It has to be a partnership between us and animals. But anyway, uh, so then Patu met me out the front uh, and we carried our journey back to Seminyak uh, via the Ubud Palace and the Sarawati Temple, which is, uh, the temple is situated inside the Lotus Cafe. And it's a lovely cafe built in the grounds of the temple with a beautiful lotus pond and there's a statue lined walkway to the temple which is just another marvel of design and craftsmanship. It's absolutely stunning. Um, And I did ask why they have the statues covered with a black and white, like kind of sarong really, like the bottom half of the statues. And it's because um, as far as they believe, the statues can be um, inhabited by good or bad spirits. And because they need balance, we all need balance in life. They pick a black and white cloth so that they've got that balance and polarity. And hopefully that will encourage a mix of spirits. So really interesting. I didn't know that. From there I went, uh, and obviously I can't go in the temple because I'm not Hindi. Um, so uh, it was just beautiful to be able to look at it from the outside. Uh, and then you go to the Ubud Palace, which is equally stunning. Um, but probably only for me as I do love a temple you know I, I know lots of other people get bored looking at temples but I can't they just speak to me and the, I love the architecture of them and the beauty of them and the feeling that I get when I'm around them they make me very happy and peaceful um, and suffice to say there was obviously more exquisite wood carving stone carving and lots of gold paint and also randomly some like weird Japanese cartoon character was on a podium in the the middle of the ground. I don't really know why or what that was for, but, you know, added to the experience. Um, And then across from the palace was a market that had been recommended to me. So so here was my first hurdle. Because crossing the road in Bali is an art form. Uh, The cars and scooters don't actually stop for you. You have to kind of judge a gap that is big enough for you to step out into the road and that will hopefully give the traffic enough time to slow down Um, so that you can then get across so that managed I entered the market and I had been told that bartering was compulsory um, if I didn't want to get ripped off I'm actually not very comfortable with bartering especially as as even if I was paying full price it's not an awful lot of money for western standards Um, and so I usually leave any kind of bartering to my husband when we're traveling but obviously I was in Bali on my own and I'm not fond of being ripped off either. So I decided to woman up and give it a go. 
so I thought I'd just a little bit of me still wasn't very keen so I thought I'll have a little try run I'll go to two or three stores and pick up the same thing and see what the price difference is but it's not a massive change in price difference and I'm just going to pay what they ask but if there's huge amounts then I'm just going to kind of pick the middle figure and go for that anyway uh so I did that that's exactly what I did and I was given three hugely different prices like we're talking hundreds of thousands of rupria different so I'm a quick learner so suffice to say that I had bartered well and both the storeholders and I were very happy with the results I could have got more money off but as I said we're not talking a huge amount in the first place and yeah if I'm honest I would have paid what they asked me anyway but it's all part of the shopping experience there and um, I've managed to get everything that I wanted to get to bring home for people and it was another great experience and um, so now I could focus on just enjoying my time in Bali my last stop of the day was to go and see Katut, who was the son of the healer Katut seen in Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, and because I kind of thought that as I was there, I might as well. And he's the most lovely person. Uh, he read my palm uh, and told me that <laughs> he thought I was very balanced uh, with knowledge and insight. So that means that I'll have a happy life and I know what to do if it's, things aren't working my way and that I have everything that I need. My karma is good. Uh, and have everything that I need to progress in my life and that was pretty much all he could tell me um so it's good to know that I'm in the right job then that's pretty much a relief but also I was just kind of questioning like well maybe that's all he does for everyone but then when I was there was other people there having readings before and after me and they got very very different readings so I was kind of pleased to hear that because you know what a lovely message to get um, so we completed our journey back to the villa and I got back just in time for evening yoga um, and then afterwards to join the other five women there along with our lovely hostess for dinner. I was seriously tired after my uh, day and I had to be up at 5.20 the next morning for my first ever surf lesson. So after a heartfelt gratitude meditation, I headed off to bed. So thanks for joining me for day two. I hope you'll join me for my next adventure, uh, learning to surf in Bali. Thanks for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. So, uh, day three and it's my surfing lesson. So, uh, I'd gone to bed early and then uh, got woken up by the weirdest sound and it sounded like some huge man-eating creature was outside uh, and about to break down the door and finish me off. But actually, when I talked to the staff in the morning, it turns out it's the noise that a, a gecko makes and it's only about eight inches long, so it wouldn't have been that much of a threat. And I now know what a gecko sounds like. Um, but anyway, I had gone back to sleep. Um, and well, all I can say is best played, pl best laid plans and all that. Because I'd set my alarm. I'd set my alarm for um, 5.20. Um, and I woke up often as I'm sure my subconscious was worried about me not waking up. Uh, and then, of course, because I was so tired, I slept through the alarm. Uh, and was woken up by security banging on my door and Eka, the hostess, ringing the phone that each of us is given. You all get given a little phone that's got everybody's numbers in it. So like security, the drivers, the hostesses, so that if you want to go off and, and wander and whatever, and then you need to speak to someone or you need picking up or you've got a question, then you can get hold of them. So anyway, she was ringing on that to find out if I was all right, because obviously I was now late for my surf lesson absolutely mortified uh couldn't apologize enough was ready in lightning quick time um and yeah like i say after much apologizing my lazy self was sorted and soon on my way with uh made who was my surfing instructor and he's just so lovely so he'd been surfing for about 30 years uh, and he decided that we were going to go to the next beach along which is uh changu uh, because he said that they had better waves uh, that day for learning to surf on. So did some exercises on the path by the car to see which was my dominant side. And then we headed to the beach to practice my pop-up. Uh, and after practicing two or three times, he was happy. Uh, we'd worked out the best way for me to get from lying on the board up to standing. Uh, and he took me to the water where it quickly became apparent that actually my pop-up wasn't working for me. Um, and whereas I've been trying to go from, um, for those of you that do yoga, from kind of a plank to warrior position or from on my belly to standing quite quickly, uh, it quickly became apparent that when you do that on water, you fall off a lot. 
so I ended up going from belly to knee to standing which was much safer um, despite that though I did wipe out many many times um, but I finally felt what he was saying and rode my first wave all the way to the beach and was as they say super stoked because obviously I've been learning the lingo just in case um, and then it was just oh then I was just hooked because once you've done that once you stood up on your board and you've ridden it it's just amazing so wave after wave came and I was staying up slightly more than I was falling off uh, and Madame was giving me tips on my stance and my board control and after a while we tried some waves that were a bit bigger and yep got wiped out time and time again but on my last but one wave I got up and I rode I just rode it all the way in and it was just yeah just fantastic so my last two rides of the day were the two biggest waves that I'd had that day what a rush at 54 I was so happy that I decided to try surfing and that I had kept getting back on that board um, you know it was hard hard going it was physically tough but what a rush and yeah so I could go back to the villa saying that I I could surf I was so so happy so um, obviously I got there everyone was keen to know whether I'd managed to do it or not and I was like telling them how I'd got on and it was just it's just amazing to watch how quickly women come together and form a group and support each other um, and everyone there was happy um, that I was that I firstly was giving it a go that was pushing myself out of my comfort zone but also everyone was ecstatic that I'd managed to stand up on my board you know because for me that was such an achievement and they were happy for me that I'd managed to do that so I felt that that was probably enough excitement for the day uh, as I'd come here to rest and reflect um, so I I just decided that I needed to rest a little bit so I did some yoga um, and yeah then I had the longest and best hot stone massage I have ever had followed by a cream bath which is not a bath at all it's actually a head massage and hair treatment and is just absolutely divine so by this time I'm starting to feel a little bit stiff um, and yeah it was all it was all starting to ache a little bit but the the massage had helped work that through and it was just amazing so after a light lunch the most delicious shrimp stir fry did I mention that the food here is incredible and um, I chilled in the hammock while digesting my food then I had a lovely leisurely swim in the pool and after I'd cooled down I spent some time in the med meditation pod which I really enjoyed it's just a different a different environment a different experience it's got the funnel so energy is tunneled towards you and you have to keep pinching yourself because you have to think I'm in Bali I'm meditating in Bali you know I'm on retreat in Bali it's just such I just never thought that this would be something that I got to do and I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to experience it so yes yeah, so I'm all lovely and chilled um, then I did some journaling and after a delicious dinner of seafood barbecue I got into my book with a, I got into bed with a book and a promise of an alarm call for security in the morning because I could not be late again. Um, I'd set my phone, I knew that security were knocking on the door so I could just go to sleep uh, and just drift off focusing on what a fabulous, fabulous day I'd had. So please join me for the rest of my adventures in Bali and thank you for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. So um, I realised what had gone wrong yesterday with my alarm. It wasn't that I'd slept through it. I'd set it, but I'd actually forgotten to give it a sound. So it went off exactly as it was meant to, uh, silently, recording, uh, ringing it off all to itself. Um, so this was quickly remedied and I was up in good time for my second surf lesson today. Uh, my day came, we drove back to Changu Beach, but this time he thought I was ready to try a shorter, thinner board and try the bigger waves. So, um, oh my goodness, I fell off or wiped out, as they like to say, so, so, so many times. Um, I got the hang of the new board eventually and finally managed to stay on and control it back to shore, which was even more of a buzz than it was the day before, because obviously I can see the progress I'm making. It's just fantastic. Um, and yeah, while I'm, so I'm heading out back towards my day for my next wave, and you just have to pinch yourself. I'm lying on a board, the sun's rising, I'm on the sea in Bali, learning to surf. I 
it's just like wow this is incredible honestly the gratitude welled up and i just felt so connected and so at peace um and yeah i just loved the surfing i mean i fell off so many times and i hit my bum and i hit my arms and i'm bruised and i ached but it was just just the best experience because because firstly i never thought i would be surfing at my age and also just because it's such a beautiful thing to do it's just amazing to be riding in on the top of a wave so very very happy very cool and um, so i finished my surf lesson get after showering and wriggling into my yoga gear which was a workout in itself really because you're slightly damp it's very humid in bali so you're sweaty all the time um and trying to put leggings and a vest top and stuff on is hard going but anyway decently covered and dressed uh, I went back to the sanctuary for a one-to-one -one yoga class with Uni and this is very cool because I chose my preferred style of yoga which is Hatha and Uni helped me to just adjust my posture so that I could get more from the asana or the poses and I could really feel the benefit of the minor adjustments that she was making um, and but also by now the two days of surfing were really making themselves known in my body and I was stiffening up and I was really quite uncomfortable and the bruises were starting to show. So having these like stretching and the gentle posture adjustments that Uni was giving me was really helping me to manage my own body. And then uh, the lovely Wei En took, took me under her wing and gave me the most amazing herbal ball massage, which is actually not dissimilar from what I'd had in the Ayurvedic massages in India, although the style of massages, uh, massage is very different. And by the time she had finished, and I must have been on her couch for kind of 90 minutes, my muscles had all been stretched out, uh, all the tension had gone from them, and I could move again. So I was incredibly grateful. Um, and I, I decided it would be really nice to go for a walk on the beach um, and, just, and just kind of get my bearings in the location that I was at. Because it's very tempting to stay in the villa, but I'm, I'm only in Bali for a short time and I want to see as much of it as I can. So... Uh, took myself off, walked past bars and shops and surprisingly a huge amount of Greek restaurants. I mean, they were everywhere. They must have passed three on the way to the beach, which is only like a 10 minute walk. So naturally took pictures of Greek restaurants to send to my husband um, as a joke. Um, and then I found myself on the beach in Seminyak and it did not disappoint. I mean, it's just picture perfect with white sand beautiful blue sea lots of quirky bars and bean bags dotted around not not too busy actually it was okay so i walked a long long way down taking in all the different languages that i could hear in the chatter that was going on around me watching the surfers do it properly and aspiring to be anywhere near as good as them it would be amazing uh, you know like it's almost if only their skill could be transferred to me if i just watched them long enough unfortunately it doesn't work like that so more practice is needed uh, and on, my, on the way back along the beach, ready getting ready to leave, I became uh, involved in someone else's business, uh, which I should know better. But I saw people riding horses along the beach and I, I really don't know how hot it was, maybe 34 degrees, 35 degrees. And I just thought, you know, the sun's blazing down. And I was all morally outraged and completely in my own head, giving off about how outrageous it was that, you know, these poor horses were out in that heat. Which, of course, was none of my business. You know, it's completely up to the people whose horses they were. I'm a visitor to the country. I don't know what the situation is. Maybe these horses are bred. Actually, it's none of my business. None of my business. Uh, and the universe pointed that out to me very rapidly as I had now lost track of where I was because I was so busy in my own head and had passed the exit back from the beach to where I needed to be. So I brought myself back to the moment and my location calmly retraced my steps until I found the road I needed to get back into town and while I still disagreed about the horses being on the beach in that heat uh, me sounding off in my head is not going to make any difference so um, I have it in my mind that I will see if there are any charities working to stop what they're doing there and uh, do what I can to help them because as far as I can see that's the only way that I can change things from my perspective so found my way back to the sanctuary after dodging the crazy amount of scooters that everyone seems to prefer uh, for driving in Bali. And I think that's mainly because the traffic, there's a lot of traffic and the scooters can just nip in and out. Uh, 
took endless photos of temples, deity statues, artwork. I mean, it's just literally everywhere. Um, and I read, I read that Bali has something like 20,000 temples. So I'm in my element and taking pictures like, like it's going out of fashion, really. Um, make my way safely back to the sanctuary. Absolutely soaked with sweat. It was so hot and so humid. So I um, had a quick shower and then chose a dragon fruit smoothie to cool me down, which absolutely lush. I think it's just like dragon fruit and vanilla yogurt and ice, but oh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Um, and then I took myself off to meditate for a bit before evening yoga. And tonight's yoga class was taken by Uni's sister Vicky, and she took us through a lovely restorative practice, which was just what my poor body needed after the last couple of days. And I, I really, really enjoyed it. And it's just so lovely to be able to take in all these different styles of yoga with different teachers and uh, learning how it's done in, in different countries. I, I just love learning, really. And it's really helpful to me um, to develop my practice by getting all this input and advice. So a quick freshen up and it was time for dinner, which again was absolutely delicious. And this time we had sweet potato fritters red and white rice, uh, rice i'd never had red rice before but yep it's very cool tuna kebabs tofu curry chicken and banana leaves and chuk chuk which is this spicy chili sauce that just adds a zing to everything and then there was loads of stir fried veg as well so absolutely delicious food uh, conversation was full of everyone's tales from their day's adventures and finding out about each other's lives and a lot of laughter so an er another early night followed as the day uh, here starts very early as it's so hot and tomorrow is my last surfing lesson of the trip so thanks for listening hope you'll tune in and find out how I get on on my next day hi so this morning I was up raring to go ready in time and Mado picked me up at six and today he decided that we were going to go to Seminyak beach for our lesson so that's where I'd walked along yesterday so I was keen to see what the difference was um, and the sea was really choppy because the tide was changing and although it doesn't really go in or out it changes direction and you get quite a strong rip um, and he said that would be really good practice for me because um, then I can learn to read the board uh, I found it really really hard going at first and I spent more time in the water or dragging my board back to him than I did surfing and I swallowed a whole lot of water but it was I could see what he meant it was really really useful because I began to understand how to start reading the board and what changes I needed to make to stay up and also to get an idea of, of as, as I'm standing up which way the board is pulling because then I know where the rip is and then I can try <laughs> and steer a different um, in a different direction so really good lesson but oh it was tiring so so tiring I was struggling to stand up in the sea because it was so choppy and then, like I say, I have to drag on my board back to where he's standing um, so that he can start help me position for the wave that's coming up. But still loved it. Then the tide changed again and the waves settled down. So I managed to ride my board back to the beach a good few times, which is still just the best feeling. You know, my style isn't very pretty. I quite often finish up flat on my bum, which is now very, very bruised. But... Like I said, I'm 54, I've learned to surf and I can now, where we go different places, especially when we go back to Greece, I can have more lessons and yeah, I'm able to say that I was lucky enough to learn to surf in Bali, so well happy and grateful dude and um, still practicing the language. <laughs> uh, got back to the sanctuary, uh, decided to celebrate my surfing success or what I count as my surfing success. I'm sure everyone else was looking at me thinking she needs to get a bum in, she needs to stand up straight, but for me, happy days. Uh, so I ordered the mango and the banana pancakes with coconut cream. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Absolutely delicious. And I settled in to have a day by the pool um, and just to relax and take some care of myself. Because so far it had been quite busy and I really, part of the reason I'd wanted to come on retreat as opposed to just going on holiday. So I really wanted the luxury of lots of meditation time and lots of time for self-exploration and reflection. So uh, finished my book, which is, of course, you pray love. Um, I've seen the film so many times, but I'd never actually read the book and, and can now say that I have. Um, so I was very happy about that. 
Then I was booked in for a Thai massage by the lovely Rutan, uh, which was full on, uh, and the bone cracking, the twisting and the pummeling left me feeling totally relaxed. And my muscles absolutely thanked her as they were no longer tight and sore from the surfing. Um, and oh, it was just amazing. Literally, she could have poured me off that couch. Um, and then she gave me a pedicure and I can confirm that I'm now sporting the most beautiful purple nails with pretty little flowers. Uh, it's not something I've had done before, but I love them uh, and I've booked in with her for a mani and a pedi before I leave on Friday. Because one, one must travel with glamour, darling, you know, and why not when in Rome and all that? So uh, after I'd had all my lovely treatments, I took myself off for a meditation uh, and I'd use the Buddha again that was in my room. So uh, like I say, he's outside of my room looking in through this beautiful window um, and he's all surrounded by bamboo. So I kept my eyes open, used the Buddha as my focal point and it was a pretty damn cool meditation. So feeling very good. I then treated myself to a swim in the pool, which is not only the perfect way to cool down, but obviously I need to keep my body moving because it's had so much exercise over the last few days. And although it's only 29 degrees uh, today, which is not very warm compared to what it is normally at this time of year, um, it says it feels like it's 32. And I'm not complaining at all. I love the sun, but it's also nice to cool down every now and then. And the pool is fabulous. Uh, met the latest guest to arrive she was very lovely had a really interesting chat with her about all things divine feminine and mindset which I found really interesting uh, and also had a chance to chat with some of the staff because I, I guess I was just chilling and they they come to make sure you're okay and it's nice to get to know the people that are uh, in and around you know um, and I was really interested to learn how they live um, and so we were chatting about like barley generally and it's patriarchal culture which means that the women go to live with the husband's family and it's all set up pretty much for in the men's favor so traditionally families live in separate buildings but on one plat of land with maybe a communal kitchen and sometimes a temple although that's quite rare the temple is usually or the altar is usually in the temple that maybe the village or town has um, and so they've all got their own bed space and maybe a toilet or bathroom but they're all like they all live essentially on the same on the same area um and divorce there is legal um but it's still morally rejected really and so the women that do manage to divorce are completely ostracized by the husband's family like you can't have any kind of relationship with the husband or uh, his family at all once you're divorced you are cut dead um, as for any friends that you may have shared and of course you've brought shame on your own family and apparently also incredibly unlikely to gain custody of the children it's usually in the husband's favour so of course this is a big pull for women to stay even in desperately unhappy or violent marriages um, and they also work incredibly long hours I mean some of some of the women that I was talking to they get up at half past four to do the ironing, prepare things for the family meals, because quite often they will cook for everybody in the family. And there might be eight or nine people, you know, you might have them with their husband and maybe children. Then there'll be um, the husband's parents, maybe the husband's grandparents, maybe the husband's siblings. And it seemed to me, and I'm, you know, I might not have got that right, but it seemed to me from what they were talking, that it's quite often for the wives to be cooking and looking after everybody. So, then they go and do a full day's work, you know, it's quite a tough life. Um, yeah, so a long old day, um, but it was really, really interesting. And I can't really have an, an opinion on on how they live in Bali because, you know, clearly it's the way that they do live and it's not for me to come in and say any changes. But I, it seems to me also to be quite archaic to the freedom and the way that we live. Um, and it, it, it was very interesting to learn so much about a different way of life. Um, anyway, I'd had a really lovely, lazy day. I was feeling really good. Lots of time for self-reflection. I'd learned loads. Had a really lovely chilled out day. And my evening yoga class was a vinyasa flow, which was really enjoyable. And he took us through our paces. Uh, and we even managed to hold crow for quite a long time, which for those of you that know, can go seriously awry. 
So I felt that I'd worked really well. I felt like I'd listened to my body. I felt like I'd done what I needed to do today to keep strong and well. I have to say, my poor bruised bum is still aching. Um, and especially the bottom of my spine. So any form of sitting down takes a little bit of posture adjustment. But absolutely brilliant. Obviously then afterwards it was time for dinner. And today we had... Uh, vegetable rice paper rolls which are just delicious and they're so served with like a satay sauce prawns and banana leaf chicken curry stir fry rice the most delicious tofu triangles in like some kind of gluten-free breadcrumb with a dipping sauce and then i had a mango rice pudding it's just food is just divine and it doesn't really come in heavy sauces it's quite light clean food and so it's really really just easy to eat and it doesn't sit heavy and yeah i've really really enjoyed the food and they've taken all the pressure off because all of the food during my stay has been gluten-free so that i can completely relax and tuck in like everyone else so that's just been such a lovely thing to be able to do so after an evening of putting the world to rights with my fellow guests it was time for bed with a heart full of gratitude for my luxurious day of self-care and for this amazing experience that i'm having in bali so Thank you for listening. I hope you join me for tomorrow's episode. Bye. Hi, thanks for joining me. So this morning I got to have a lay in uh, because I would I had planned to go or I am going to the Tanalot Temple, but I didn't need to get up until 7 a.m., which is the latest I have got up since I arrived in Bali. Um so yeah, I got myself all organised and Pussy drove me for about 45 minutes during which he pointed out the most stunning views of the mountains, which are really only visible on clear days like we had today. And he was also telling me all about the Tanalot Temple, which apparently was built to honour the Batara Segra, probably haven't said that right, um, who is a sea god who used his mighty power to create a poisonous snake from his sash. And that snake is then supposed to be living at the base of the temple and protects it from evil and intruders. Um, and I love a temple and God knows I've visited enough of them uh, in my 54 years. But this one absolutely took my breath away. And I don't even really know why. I mean, it is beautiful, but there's just something special about it. And you go through this archway column thing and then you just get a view of the sea with this amazing looking huge rock with gorgeous bougainvillea and an abundance of green trees and foliage growing on it. And that in itself would probably have been enough. But I mean, that wasn't even the main temple. It was just kind of like a side building. Um, the main temple is over to the left and that just absolutely took my breath away. It's So it's like a giant rock turtle. Well, that's what it looked like to me with kind of elephant trunks at its side. And it has steep steps going up the inner temple, which you can only visit with a priest, apparently, for a ceremony. Um, uh, and then that, too, has all this bougainvillea and lush trees growing on top of it. And you have to think, well, how come? It's a rock and it's seawater. But anyway, we'll leave that as one of the mysteries of the universe. Um, and it does look truly, truly stunning. But I don't think it's that that makes it stand out. I think it's more the energy of the place. It's so peaceful and tranquil and calming. And despite the fact that obviously there's tourists and people milling around, it still holds that peace. Um, and it's built in the sea. So you have the sound of the waves coming. And oh, yeah, it's just the most beautiful thing. And <laughs> Patu and I were saying, you know, like you could just sit here all day. You could just sit there and close your eyes and just allow the sounds to wash over you. And then when you do open your eyes again, the view is so stunning. It just it literally makes your heart feel absolutely fantastic place. So obligatory photos have been taken uh, and I took loads, even though I knew it would be absolutely impossible to capture its true presence, beauty and aura. Um, and Putu by now has got to know me pretty well. So he asked if I would like some time to meditate while we were there because he knew a good spot. So, I mean, no, it's Pope Catholic. So he took me off to a place with the cliffs behind me. I had the sea to the left and I had Tanalot right in front of me. Absolute perfection. And despite lots of tourists, I was able to drop in straight away. And as I said before, I have been fortunate to have meditated in some very special places uh, with amazing energy. Uh, and this place was right, right up there. Just fantastic meditation. Anyway, so... I did my thing and with my meditation finished, uh, Patu asked if I'd like to see the holy snake and the priest. 
So obviously I've heard the story and I said, yeah, that'd be great, thinking it'd be a statue or something. Um, but yes, yeah, so I handed over my donation, entered into the cave and oh uh, no, there's the priest, lovely little man, sitting on a rock with live snakes and lots of them all coiling and writhing next to him and it was like mm. anyway so I was told to bring to mind my prayer and then to touch these snakes while the priest blessed me and then that of course would um, help my prayer come to life or something anyway so of course the first words out of my mouth are are they dangerous I'm not great with snakes I don't there's no animal that I really dislike but snakes I'm always worried that well basically they're going to kill me but anyway so he assures me no no they're not dangerous so I duly brought my prayer to mind I touched all of the snakes I then thanked the priest and he left the and I left the car the cave and as we're going out two leans over to me and says you do know those snakes are deadly poisonous and I looked at him and laughed and said, do you not think you should have mentioned that first? Oh, no, he replied. There's no danger. The priest was there. So you'd be completely safe. All oh, right. Good to know. huh? Anyway, survived the snake experience. Um, and then uh, the tide was now going out by this time. And so you, there was a crossing became evident between the cliffs and the temple. Um, and although I couldn't visit the temple itself, I could go to the holy spring underneath it and again pray, wash my face in the same way that I had at the Purana Terta Empul. And then the holy men that are standing there sprinkle you with holy water over your head with a trig brush and they stick grains of rice over your third eye. And apparently that is so that my mind, so that the essence of me, can become focused on gratitude and abundance because rice, rice is life here. Um, so anyway, way ahead of those guys already so full of gratitude and always um manifesting abundance but it was such a special experience so we took in the energy for a while longer two and i really uh, just chatting about culture and uh, oh, i had so many questions why do the men wear this why are the women wearing that are they allowed to do this anyway it turns out that um sarongs are very popular obviously because they're out of respect um and depending on what kind of ceremony people um, are attending, it depends on what colour they will wear. Uh, the women tend to wear these long straight skirts with like lacy blouses over the top. And that, that is personal preference, the colours that they wear for that. And they wear something, the men wear something on their head, which is kind of like a bit of a, it's not, it's not really a bandana, but it's uh, like a scarf that goes around the top of the head. And that the idea of that is to keep their thoughts and to keep them focused, their mind focused on living well, being good people um, and controlling, controlling their mind so they don't engage in the seven deadly sins. So um, I didn't really want to leave, but we had to go because um, I'd already got other stuff booked in for the rest of the day. So... I took my last look at the place and I have to say I am or I was I am still really drawn to that place and could have quite happily spent the whole day there um, but anyway we headed off back to the sanctuary uh, and when I got there um, so I potentially I had a aerial yoga class booked in but when we got to the place in um near Changu that was going to be doing the aerial yoga they'd had an issue that day and had had to cancel so I ended up getting back to the sanctuary earlier so I took a swim to cool off then had a delicious lunch of seafood skewers with garlic and chili green beans and a watermelon smoothie and the food just keeps getting better and better I mean there has not been one single thing that isn't absolutely delicious and the lovely chef Iluk had even packed me a breakfast of fresh trop fruits with a little thing of yogurt for me to enjoy on my way to the temple honestly her food is divine so after lunch, read for a while, took myself off to meditate again. And I think one of the biggest pleasures for me of coming here on retreat on my own, uh, and there have been plenty of pleasures, is the luxury of taking time to strengthen and maybe even indulge in my practice. And it has been really, really insightful. And I feel incredibly peaceful and self-aware. And, and that's a gift. I'm really, really interesting to see where I can take what I've learned from this experience and how I can change my life um, and then it was time for me to have my coconut body scrub and reflexology which again was lovely so by the time I leave tomorrow 
I will have worked my way through every single treatment they have on offer at the sanctuary. And there is not, or there will not be, a part of me that has not been massaged, stretched, pummeled or soothed. Um, and I have pretty amazing looking finger and toenails, next, thanks to Ratner's nail art. Um, and I feel incredible. And still, despite having all the bruises from the surfing, my body has never felt more relaxed and flexible. Um, and yeah, I think the heat helps with that as well, because it just kind of helps you to stay nice and loose. So I've had a really lazy, lovely afternoon. Um, and then it was time for my last yin yoga session at the sanctuary. And so yin yoga is a practice where the asanas or poses are held anywhere from between two to five minutes. And it tends to be a restorative practice. So there were only three of us for class tonight. And after some lovely chanting, pranayama or breath work, you might know it as, and some long held stretching poses, I think it's safe to say that we were all left feeling very calm and loose and ready for dinner which was of course delicious and we heard about one of the other guests experience of the monkey forest that I'd gone to earlier in the week um, and she'd had um, a little monkey play with her so that was kind of cute uh, and she'd been to the silver jewellery um, artisan area and she bought herself a beautiful bracelet and and we met a new guest who had arrived from America so lovely evening and then the lady that I was talking to the, uh, the day before about um, the Divine Feminine and the rest of it, um, we'd stayed up again and we had another little chat and I did an oracle card reading for her, um, which was really a lovely thing to be able to do and also I hope gave her some guidance. So then after organising all my stuff so that packing would be easier tomorrow, headed off to bed with my alarm set really early so that I could check out the sunrise on the beach. And uh, I had drifted off to sleep, grateful for another day of self-care on this amazing experience that I'm having. So thank you for listening. I hope you'll join me for my last day in Bali. So overnight we had the most incredible rain it woke me up because it was coming down so hard but you know that lovely sound when you're all snug in your bed and you've got and the mosquito net's like a little tent so you just feel like really cocooned and protected and the rain is coming down so hard that you can hear it bouncing off uh, the outdoor bathroom's roof uh, oh and it was just so lovely um yeah it was just a great sound so I drifted back off to sleep, uh, hoping that obviously it would have stopped the time my alarm went off at 5am. And this was my last day in Bali, so I wanted to make the most of it and do all the little things that I hadn't managed to do up till now. So alarm went off uh, and the rain had eased off to a very fine drizzle when I got up. So I decided to go ahead with my plan to walk down to the beach and watch the sunrise. Uh, quickly got washed and dressed, borrowed a very large umbrella from the dining room and quietly let myself out. And it was, everywhere was dark, everything was reflected in the water still laying on the floor. Um, and it was really lovely to be walking around with not much traffic, hardly any people. It's all very quiet and calm um, as the day generally started to wake itself up. So I got to the beach just in time to see the clouds start to break up and the first glimmer of light come through. By this time it's completely stopped raining and it's actually really warm and very pleasant. And the sea was doing its thing, making that gorgeous sound of swishing in and out. And there were surfers uh, already paddling off to the waves, even though it wasn't quite light. And over the next half an hour, the orange glow of the sun began to appear until it was fully light. And I love watching a new day begin. And this was certainly a beautiful way to start my last day in Bali. I said a thank prayer of thanks to whomever might be listening. And after I'd had my fill of walking along the beach and taking my photos of the changing light, uh, it was by that time fully light and the day was uh, underway. So I started up the steps that led off to the beach back on the way that I needed to walk. And for whatever reason, I turned back for a last look at the sea and I couldn't believe it. I noticed the most amazing column of beautiful colours. There was a rainbow over the sea. So as if I hadn't already had a fabulous start to the day, now I've got the added bonus of a rainbow and I'm standing there watching it and lots of people have now noticed and we're all taking pictures. And then a second rainbow began, began to appear to the left of the first one. And like, it was just amazing. I mean, what a truly stunning thing to see. Um, and yeah, so that was just the perfect start to my day. I've just had the best time in Bali and 
yeah I loved it so I was very grateful to have got to see that and then as it started to fade away again I started to walk back to the villa um, to show anyone who might be interested my photos of the double rainbow over the sea so I got back everyone was duly impressed with the photos um, and then I went off to pack and get ready for my last yoga class which also happened to be a one-to-one -one. so the lovely uni whose birthday it was um, took me through another hatha practice and again adjusting my posture as we went along and it's incredible in just a week how much my body's changed and how much my practice has changed but also how much more stretch she can get out of my body with just a little pressure and a slight adjustment so really really grateful to her for everything that I learned there and after a short meditation class was finished uh, and I headed off to get some breakfast and today I had a Nasai Goreng which uh, as I've come to explain was absolutely delicious um, and it's kind of like lots of rice and bean sprouts and vegetables all in this like little tower thing with a uh, fried egg on top lush absolutely delicious so when I'd finished eating uh, I took my cup of tea my black tea and I went to sat on the grass in front of the huge golden buddha because no one else was really around so it was really lovely so I was sitting there looking at the Buddha, reflecting on my week in Bali and the things that I'd been able to let go of and the realisations that I'd had. And we're just acknowledging the immense gratitude that I have that I've been able to spend a week at the Bliss Sanctuary. Uh, and just to, the freedom to be able to indulge in the ultimate gift of self-care, you know, for the sightseeing, for the things that I've learned about the country, its culture, for learning to surf. Um, and just having an opportunity to have a chat with the Buddha, essentially, um, in such a beautiful place. So very grateful for that as well. And with my mindful mutterings over, I went for a last swim in the villa pool. And then from following my swim, the lovely Ratna gave me a wonderful jasmine infused hot oil aromatherapy massage. And when she'd finished, she redid my nails and toes with the prettiest hand painted flowers that um, I absolutely love. So I had a last lunch of grilled jumbo shrimps, uh, green chilli beans with garlic and a sweet corn and chilli salsa, which was absolutely delicious. And then it was time for me to leave. My Bali adventure was coming to an end and it was time for me to head off back to the airport. So hugs all round with the beautiful staff who've taken such amazingly good care of me this week and with the other guests who've made this week so enjoyable and have added to the memories that we all have of uh, the sanctuary it's just been amazing and I have to say I've had the most incredible experience this week I've flown to the other side of the world and back again on my own I've been on my first international retreat I've learnt to surf I've done lots of yoga I've visited beautiful temples a monkey forest and a palace I've meditated in some spiritually charged and very sacred places I've swum, I've eaten delicious, freshly prepared food, I've had time for me, I've created space to just be, I've had some powerful insights about who I am and what I need to do next to grow and I have enjoyed every single minute of it. So I've put some links in the episode description of the places that I can wholeheartedly recommend if you ever decide to visit Bali. And wherever you choose to go, I wish you happy, safe travels. As always, thank you for listening. And I hope you'll join me for my next adventure, wherever that may be. Take care. Bye.